Welcome to the Daughter Dialogues podcast. My name is Risha Rainey, and I will be your host. I would like to introduce myself as well as talk about what you can expect to hear from this podcast series. The name Daughter Dialogues comes from the narratives that you will hear from Black women and members of color in the Daughters of the American Revolution. I am one of those members. I am African American, and I am a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution. I'm a direct descendant of President Thomas Jefferson's grandfather, who had a grandson who contributed to the American Revolution. I will be telling my full story later in this podcast series. I am also the first Black state officer for the state of Maryland and the fourth or fifth Black state officer in the history of the society nationwide and worldwide. I graduated from Spelman College with a degree in mathematics and from Georgia Tech with a degree in mechanical engineering. I am also the owner and president of Inside Corporation, a systems engineering company, and my company is currently ranked in the top 4% of women-owned businesses nationwide. So let's talk about the DAR, the Daughters of the American Revolution. A lot of people think that the DAR is a social organization where women sit around wearing funny hats, drinking tea. But we actually do projects in the community, such as preserving cemeteries or donating supplies to support women in domestic abuse shelters or attending naturalization ceremonies, awarding scholarships, and we also volunteer a lot in veterans' homes. The Daughters of the American Revolution is a nonprofit and nonpolitical volunteer women's service organization founded in 1890, and their mission is to promote historic preservation, education, and patriotism. And they currently have 185,000 members in 3,000 chapters in the United States and worldwide. Last year, they welcomed their one millionth member to have joined the DAR since it was founded. And eligibility is open to any woman 18 years or older, regardless of race, religion, or ethnic background, who can prove lineal descent from a patriot of the American Revolution. So you will hear that word often, patriot. Patriot is the ancestor of the members of the Daughters of the American Revolution, and that ancestor has been proven to have contributed to the Revolutionary War, and not necessarily fought in the Revolutionary War, they could have contributed to supplies. So I'm not a genealogist or a historian by any means. This project came about when I was regent of my chapter, and that's a word you will hear a lot in the podcast series is regent. Regent means the leader of a chapter. So there's a regent, a vice regent, a treasurer, a secretary, etc. So as regent of the chapter, my chapter was struggling and it needed revitalization. And my bright idea was to get us into the local newspaper. So I called the Washington Post and said, don't you want to do a story about our chapter? I'm inviting the county executive to attend one of our events, a big event in the county that we were putting together for the chapters. And they said, well, the county executive attends a lot of events. That's not news. And so I was very disappointing, but they said, but who are you? Why are you calling? So I told them that I was an African-American member of the Daughters of the American Revolution. And they said, well, how did you become a member? And I told them that I was a direct descendant of Thomas Jefferson's grandfather. And then that was the story. That is what they wanted to tell. I never thought that that story was going to be about me. I thought it was going to be publicity for my chapter so we could attract more members and the county executive coming to see us. But it ended up that they were more interested in my story. And how was it that a black woman was in the Daughters of the American Revolution and descended from a former United States president's family and taking a leadership role in the society? So in the days leading up to the 4th of July, 2013, the Washington Post ran a story about me, my family history, and my role as a young black leader in the Daughters of the American Revolution. And it was spotted by Harvard University. Professor Henry Louis Gates Jr., who is the now host of the PBS special, Finding Your Roots, took notice. I met with him 
And that encounter resulted in my becoming a non-resident fellow of the W.E.B. Du Bois Research Institute at the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research at Harvard University under the direction of Henry Lewis Gates, Jr. My project is documenting the narratives of women of color in the Daughters of the American Revolution. So I went about trying to gather data regarding how many people actually knew that the DAR had black members. So in 2014, the DAR hosted a tribute concert celebrating the 75th anniversary of Marian Anderson's concert on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And to provide historical context, Marian Anderson, who was a celebrated opera singer in 1939, the DAR refused permission for Miss Anderson to sing to an integrated audience in Constitution Hall. Well, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who was also a DAR member, resigned from the DAR as a result. And the federal government, in turn, invited Miss Anderson to sing at a public recital on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial Easter Sunday, April 1939. And some 75,000 people came to the concert. During the 75th anniversary tribute concert in DAR Constitution Hall, the DAR President General, which is the title for the head of the entire National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution, got up on stage to make remarks for the concert goers, and she was met with boos. The crowd booed the President General of the Daughters of the American Revolution, and I was appalled. I felt sad and ashamed for her, and I wanted to know how many people in the audience actually knew that members like me existed who were African American and having a positive experience in the society as it is today and taking leadership roles And I just wanted to tell the people around me, these were very astute people. They were opera lovers and sophisticated men and women dressed in suits and nice dresses. And they were booing. They were booing the president general of the DAR because of the history and the unfortunate event back in 1939. I had met with the president general before and I enjoyed our time together and she was very supportive of my research. So I went outside, stood on the corner in Washington, D.C. in front of DAR Constitution Hall and waited for the concert goers to come out so I could survey them to see if they knew that DAR had members that looked like me. And unsurprisingly, many of them had no clue. And they also did not know that there were patriots of color in the American Revolution. So the DAR has documented over 6,000 patriots that are African American or American Indian. And there is a document called Forgotten Patriots, which lists these patriots. The DAR has made many amends since the 1939 incident, but it seems the public will not allow them to change in their perception. In 1943, the DAR welcome Marian Anderson to perform at Constitution Hall for a war relief concert. And it's also important to note that Marian Anderson chose Constitution Hall as the place she launched her Farewell American Tour in 1964. In 2005, the DAR hosted a dedication ceremony at their headquarters for the Marian Anderson commemorative stamp at the invitation of the United States Postal Service and Miss Anderson's family. In 2009, on the 70th anniversary of Miss Anderson's Lincoln Memorial Concert, the DAR hosted a reception at their headquarters following a Marian Anderson tribute concert and naturalization ceremony. And I actually was there for that reception. On the 75th anniversary in 2014, they hosted the tribute concert that I stood out on the corner afterwards collecting surveys and Constitution Hall to pay tribute to Marian Anderson. The DAR has also posted a public statement on their website saying they deeply regret that they did not allow Marian Anderson to perform in 1939 at Constitution Hall. And they also say that they truly wish that history could be rewritten and that they have 
learned from the past. From my conversations and observations and surveys, it became very clear to me that it was important to tell the stories of these Black members and women of color who decided to join this organization despite its history. And despite that there's so few Black members, DAR does not keep an official record of the race of its members. So I get this question asked of me often, How many Black members are in the DAR? How many women of color in the DAR? We have no clue. So we only find these women by word of mouth. And that's why it's important to have a collection of the faces as displayed on the DaughterDialogues.com website, where we can see the women of color that we know of. In the podcast, we will be hearing directly from these women. We will hear their stories. In 2019, we lost our highest ranking Black member of the society, Wilhelmina Rhodes Kelly. She was the New York State Regent, meaning she was the head, the leader of the state of New York. She was the first state regent in the history of the society that was African-American and the first Black to be on the National Board of Management of the DAR. It was a great and significant loss as she passed away after only a few months in office. That loss happened while I was documenting her story, and it really set a fire under me to gather the stories of the other women while we have the opportunity. We will also hear from these women how they connect to the story of their patriot, the men and women who are their ancestors that fought for the independence of the United States of America, which is a very important topic at this moment in 2020, considering the global conversation regarding race and in particular Black lives and our place in society in the United States. In each Daughter Dialogues podcast episode, you will hear from a different woman of color that is a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution telling about her journey. We have a diverse group of women that we will hear from. The DAR has Black women who descend from Black patriots, white patriots, and even American Indian female patriots. These are all men and women who contributed to the founding of of the United States of America. I want to thank my DAR sisters, especially Michelle Weary, for suggesting or rather pushing the idea of collecting the oral histories for my project in the form of a podcast. And thank you to Nikki Williams Sebastian for facilitating my access to these women. She stays a lot more socially connected than me and she served as a conduit for connecting me with them. And this podcast is independent and does not necessarily reflect the views of the Daughters of the American Revolution. We look forward to sharing the dialogue of our first guest in our next episode. See you soon. Mm -hmm.